Hey, welcome, welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that hopefully you're watching this in black and white reasons which will become clear once you see the start of the tutorial I'm trying something I've never done before today but today I am testing two of the elf bright sized eyeshadow palettes so four pound palettes what do I think? How do they work? How do they work? How do they apply? Difficult to blend? Not difficult to blend? Good pigmentation? Bad pigmentation? As good as the 18 pan palettes that Elf will use? Or not? All these questions and more will be answered in this film. So my darlings, Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get ready for glorious Technicolor. Because here it comes. Hello my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Once again, it's a pre-7am filming, so fingers crossed you're not going to get swearing from that side. Could not get any filming done at all yesterday. They were screaming at each other pretty much all day. Lovely. Right. I think I'm probably going to do the intro in black and white. I think. So you won't have actually seen these in colour yet. Now, regular viewers who will have seen some of the, the films that I put up in January will recognise this. This is the Elf Earth and Ocean palette. I used this pretty much the whole of Christmas and New Year. Um, I could do neutral looks, I could do green looks, I could do blue looks, I could do whatever I wanted really. And then Elf bought out these little four panners and yes I know it's basically redundant me picking these up because I've got them all in here however this is quite a big palette to cart around in comparison to these and if you do end up staying overnight somewhere these will fit pretty much into any bag you take with your crush. You could stick it in your pocket, you know. Um, so I picked up two. I picked up the Hot Jalapeno and the ICU, which I always used to pronounce as Akai. Yeah. Um, again, these are not named, the shades. You can see you've got two mattes and two shimmers in that one. And two mattes, a shimmer and a satin in that one. So what I'm going to do, because I know exactly how well this palette performs, I want to know if these minis are the same formula because if they are, they're absolutely worth getting. If you looked at this and thought, well, I love those murky greens, but I won't wear the blues. It's not worth me buying the palette. You know? But because they're so tiny, I'm probably going to do green on one eye and blue on the other, which I don't think I've ever done in my life before. I've done 
kind of different liner designs but with the same shadows both sides so this one's going to be a bit of a first for me and we'll probably throw my kind of I don't know how I feel about this out the window so I'm going to do one eye at a time this time I think so I don't get confused uh, that was a lot of blethering sorry about that this is still a teaching channel so my chronic pain dictates I cannot blend very quickly however it does mean that absolute beginners can keep up with me there's a speed widget out there somewhere feel free to use it now um, I'm going to insert the clip now where I discuss the difference between deep set eyes and hooded eyes they have similar issues to deal with but the workarounds for them are very different and I see a lot of people online going oh I've got hooded eyes and I'm like mm, no you've actually got deep set eyes and if you follow the workaround for deep set eyes rather than hooded eyes your eye look will look a hundred times better bit of a warning for those of you who haven't seen this before this clip will be very up close and personal please do not scream once the clip is finished, I will be back to put some colour onto my lids. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. 
and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I'm back. Okay. I'm going to use one of the Blush Tribe uh, brushes. It's clean. It's just stained. It's not had its deep clean for the week. And I'm going to start off with the green, this side. And I'm going to go in with this shade here. reasonable amount of kick up about the same as in the big pans. It's really not an issue for me because you can just pick that up to help build the shadow up. As always I'm holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible and I shall be starting with my usual little circular movements. I prefer to put less pigment on the brush and build the colour up and go straight in with warmth pigment. And so far this is performing pretty similarly to the main palette. Oh, this brush is doing me any favours actually. Might be a little bit too fluffy. I'll see. Oh no, it seems to be blending it out, okay. You can see I change the direction of the circle as I come back. The reason I do that is because I'm 45, I'll be 46 in May. I've lost 14 stone which is around about 200 pounds, just over the 200 pounds I've lost now. And uh, skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds that have always been slim that have looser eyelids, so... Yes. This is blending out. I mean, it's weird. In my mirror, this doesn't look patchy, but in my viewfinder, it does. I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a blend. I find this quite a bit. Sometimes, when I say that, when I then look at it, because obviously the viewfinder isn't high def the same way the camera lens is. Um, sometimes when I'm reviewing the film it does look um, blotchy, sometimes it doesn't but I can assure you in real life this is not patchy at all. And greens and blues are some of the more difficult colours to create. So the fact that it's blended out so nicely is a good sign. I nearly went in to go and do this side and then remembered I'm going to do a different colour that side. It's so automatic for me to do that. 
Well, unlike the other seven o'clock when it was really dark and dim outside, it's actually really bright out there at the moment. Almost looks like the start of a summer's day. Can but hope that the spring's on its way. Had some pretty rough weather the last few weekends. Quite gusty winds, you know, it's taken fence panels down and stuff. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off. Yeah, I think I probably would, I could have made my life easier had I chosen a slightly less fluffy brush. Because that can sometimes be an issue. So, going in for a more tapered blended brush this time. Going into the deeper of the two mats. I mean these were, I think, four quid each. Um, okay, this mat's got more kick up to it. But that could be because it's a more dense brush going into it. I'm just going to concentrate this further down and deepen up through the crease and onto the outer third of my mobile lid. I mean, these these are ideal for travel. I mean, I we, we very often stay at the mother-in-law's overnight. You know, we'll go up there for um, you know, catching up with the brother-in-law and everything. Crash there the night. So it's always nice to have. I've usually got one of my Super Shock Shadows in my little makeup bag and um, I'll just use that as a one and done on the lid. But these would be really nice for travel because you know if you're going somewhere say for a week or more you could take these little palettes you'd have a lot more colour options I think they've got either six or eight different colour colourways with them and if they do get broken they're only like four quid it's not like it's not like you're taking an ABH palette or a Jeffree Star palette or you know one of your more expensive And if you can get this kind of payoff with the shadows anyway, you know, do you really need to take an expensive palette on holiday? Risk it getting damaged or stolen or, you know, if your luggage mysteriously goes missing and turns up a few days later having obviously been gone through, you know, it's... I mean, you can see that's built up really, really nicely. Really nicely. Makes you want to do the other eye the same. Restrain yourself, Ange. Restrain yourself. Right. Again, I'm going to use my Jeffrey lip brush to go for the shimmers because I like this because you can get right into the corner there which is great if you have got deep set eyes uh, as always once I've loaded the pigment onto the brush I will wet it with I'm really out of this one I normally use a cheaper spray than my Slay All Days but this is the Jasmine one which for some reason and I've got no idea why it does it it's the only scent of theirs that dries my jawline out so Right, so I'm going to go into the yellow gold first. Pack the pigment on both sides. Pack the pigment, always dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that 
put it in your crease of your knuckle and spin it because the last thing you want is moisture going down here and loosening the bristles of your brush so I'm going to put this just in the inner corner bring that up and out A little bit of fallout I can feel coming down, but I always do my base second anyway, so it's not an issue. Bring that along a bit further and just fade it along the lid a little bit. Clean the brush. Yeah, you're kind of restricted to the number of looks you can do just with a quad. But... If you've got three of these in your handbag, and bearing in mind you don't have to use both shimmers in each look, and you could do a one and done look, this is the other, the green shimmer. Again, loaded both sides. And apply this to the middle section of my lid, bringing it out towards the matte section on the end there, just using the very tip of the bristles just to blend that into the matte, and then lightly dragging the gold and the green against each other. just to blur them together a little bit. I mean that is really pretty and that's a four pounds eyeshadow palette. Hello. And it performed as well as the earth as the greens do in the Earth and Ocean palette. So that this one is definitely comparable. To the larger palette. Right, I'm going to grab a different, a slightly more dense blending brush for the blues. And I'm going to start off with this cornflower matte just here. Very similar to the colour of my kitchen walls, actually. This is one of my do colour brushes that I got. From AliExpress. A lot more kick up in the blue than there was in the green. But the same thing, holding the brush at the end. Circular movements. Bit of a bounce in the middle, reverse the direction back out again. To build the blue up. Now obviously where this blue is a lighter shade it does look as though it's blending easier than the green did. That is literally just because it's a lighter shade. If the green had been a lighter colour it would have looked like it was blending easier. It's just because there was more of a contrast between the colour of my skin with the white primer on it than there is with this one. But that being said this is blending out very nicely. Now I do struggle with this eye. This is the eye that I'm blinding and it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid. You see these really deep creasing here? I get like a barcoding effect and I do have to stretch this lid out unfortunately because just doing the figure, just doing the, the circles it doesn't actually work in terms of getting all of the barcoding or striping out. It's not that obvious with this lighter shade 
I'll probably show you when I put the deeper colour on. Clean the brush. Using the same blush tribe mini brush that I used for the green this side, just make sure I've got all the green off of it. And I'm going to go into this sort of what I call an Air Force blue because it really is the colour of RAF uniforms. And the same thing this side, deepen up the outer corner and across. And I'll also deepen up the outer third of the mobile lid. So, how's your day been so far? Is it the start of your day? Are you watching me as you're putting your own makeup on? Or have you cornflakes? Or is it the end of your day? Are you watching me to chill out after a hard day at work or school? Or are you watching me at work or school when you shouldn't be? Shh. I won't tell anyone. Caitlin, if you're watching me, go do your lessons. Unless it's break time, then you can watch me. Right. Now this blue is not wanting to blend just there, but I do get a dry spot just there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure the edges are all blended out how I want them. There you can see what I mean about the tiger striping. literally because the creases are so deep that uh, I get this issue. It doesn't happen with this eye, thankfully. And then what you can do, if you also have a patch like that that won't blend, either because of the pigment or, as in my case, you've got a dry patch on your eyelid, once you've blended all your edges out and you're happy with how they're looking, get some more pigment on the brush and just lightly tap it over the area and do the tap to blend rather than sweeping it away and then you'll actually build the colour up rather than sweep it away. Clean the brush off, grab the Jeffrey brush again Let's have a look at these two. So you can see we've got a shimmer and a satin. So I'm going to put the shimmer on the inside edge and the satin in the middle. And yep, I just wiped it on my trouser leg. Well, shorts, but these PJs need to go into the bin and into the wash basket anyway today. Yes, I've still got my PJ shorts on. You can't see them. Although, I've told you now that I'm wearing them, so there goes all the illusion. Right. So, pack the pigment both sides. Wet both sides again. And as I said, unfortunately, I do have to stretch this lid out. It's especially important when I'm using shimmers like this. Because otherwise what happens is rather than being blended out across the lid like I'm doing here, they end up accumulating just loosely in the creasing. And then as the day goes on, they sort of dry up and start cascading down my face and into my eye, which is... A, painful, and B, irritating as heck when you've got your face done. But you can see I only 
pulled it out for as long as I needed to to get it over the creased bit and then let go. Clean the brush off. I was just into that one, now I'm going into this one. Wipe the brush again, dry the ferrule, and I do tend to get more fallout on this side because the skin on this eye is looser because it was pulled around so much. So when I apply the second shimmer, I tend to go from the outside in rather than the inside out initially to try and keep the fallout over here as much as possible, I've completely failed with that. Again, use the tip of the bristles to blend those two bits there, and then lightly drag the two colours together. Right. <laughs> Can't really look like I've gone 10 rounds of Bruno. But as you can see, it does dust away quite nicely. So, I am going to pause you. I'm going to micellar wipe here to tidy up. It's my throat growling, obviously it wants a drink. Um, I shall then throw some foundation etc on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you all these eye looks. See you right now. Hello, I am back. I am stating the obvious. Right, I think what I'm going to do, because this is driving me crazy with two different looks, I'm going to put blue under this eye and green under this one otherwise I'm going to feel completely mismatched so I'm just going to go in with the, the more densely tapered brush and I'm going to go into the Air Force Blue and just very lightly dust that along my lower lash line on the green side because I'm just the sort of person that would do that kind of thing and then I'm going to go into the deeper green it's not an army green, the one next to it is more of an army green this first shade Run the green. Might get a smell on the green, actually, make this green blend out a bit easier. On the green. Under the blue eye. Which bizarrely is looking more blue. So let's stick a bit of green with the blue under this eye. And kind of, oh, well, that'll do. <coughs> Clearly, I didn't clean enough blue off before I went into the green. It's my own fault. Right, highlight time. Uh, I'm going to go in with a highlight that I haven't used for a while. This is from House of Sparkles. And it is Fallen Angel. Now this is a cheap lip brush that I got from eBay probably a decade ago. Possibly more than a decade ago now. But I am 
I'm absolutely gonna be taking these little ones with me and I stay overnight at the mother in laws In fact, as soon as I've finished filming, they're probably going to... Oh, actually, no, because I need to film my um, second half of my eyeshadow contingent collection. Right. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this highlighter over my face. Do mascara, lipstick and something with my hair. And I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. I am back. Okay, I used the same highlight, obviously. Uh, mascara is the Revolution Cannabis Sativa Blowout Mascara. Lippy is, uh, read it off the end of the box, Orange, Sorcery, one of the uh, Jeffrey glosses. So, what are my thoughts on the bite size shadows? I really like them. I am absolutely going to pick up a few more of these and as soon as I have filmed the second half of my, these are all my eyeshadows, you can bet your life these are going to go into my overnight bag makeup kit so that I've got an option there if I want to. Um, four quid, absolute bargain. Absolute bargain and if you're someone who is only starting to get into colour that would be a good way for you to test out which colours you think suit you the best without having to fork out a fortune because you can pick one of those up for four quid and you can have a play and if you're not overly keen on an all green or I can't see all blue look then you can always use them as pops of colour on the lower lash line you can use you can do a neutral crease with a pop of colour on the lid um, there's, there's so many different options that you have available to you with just those little quads and also if you're not confident yet on colour theory and which colours work together. You've only got four to choose from. Makes your life a lot quicker in the mornings as well. Rather than being faced with a £35 palette going, oh, I don't know which colour I want to use. So, do I recommend them from what I've seen so far? Yes. Are they comparable to the quality of the 18 pan palettes from e.l.f. yes so I would say crack on and grab yourself one or two or all of them right if you are one of my 4F babies please double check you are still subscribed also please hit the like button apparently it really does help in terms of getting your film out there because my films used to get sort of 100, 200 views, 300 views. Now I'm lucky to push sort of like 50, 60 views on film. So not quite sure what's going on, but clearly my films are not getting recommended to people that are not on my subscriber list. Hell, I'm not even sure it's getting pushed out to the people who are on my subscriber list. Um, so anything you can do to help raise the profile liking, commenting, sharing would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I'm glad you found the channel. Uh, I hope you've liked what you've seen so far. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there must be something about the channel you quite liked. It'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. 
it's super easy to do you hit the subscribe button you turn it from red to grey you ring the bell you say yes I want notifications yes I want all notifications yes I really want all notifications and YouTube might let you know every fourth video I upload talking of videos I've got an awful lot of other films you can check out if you wish in the meantime basically pick a playlist grab a drink put your feet up and indulge right my darlings as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.